Hey there! In today's video, I will show you how you can set up Kubernetes on your VPS server. With it, you'll be able to automate deployments, effortlessly scale applications, and manage your containers with ease. Let's get to it. Okay, so for the uninitiated, Kubernetes is an open source platform for managing containerized applications, including deployment and scaling. Now, that sounds a bit complicated, but basically it makes your applications run efficiently across a cluster of machines. Kubernetes does all of this through a central control plane and various core components. First, we have the nodes, which form the foundation of a Kubernetes cluster. These can be physical servers or virtual machines and come in two types. Master nodes manage the cluster and worker nodes run the actual containers. Next, pods are the smallest deployable units in Kubernetes, acting as application building blocks. A pod can hold one or more containers that are scheduled to run together on the same node. Then we have replication sets, which maintain a desired number of identical pods to ensure high availability. If a pod fails, the replication set creates a new one to replace it. Next on the list are services, which make applications accessible online and handle load balancing. They act as an abstraction layer, providing a consistent way to access containerized applications. Plus, they hide the complexities of network connectivity. Kubernetes front end, the API server, processes requests to manage various aspects of the cluster, like deploying applications or scaling resources. And finally, ingress controllers act as gatekeepers to manage incoming traffic to the cluster. Installing Kubernetes will get all of these components running together. So let's go ahead and set it up. You'll need to run plenty of commands to do that, so make sure to check the article I linked in the description to make it all easier. Before we set up Kubernetes, we'll have to figure out the deployment method. This will typically be either a local environment, self-hosting, or managed services. Deploying Kubernetes in a local environment is great for learning, testing, and development. However, it's not really suitable for production deployments due to its limitations to scalability, reliability, and security, say compared to a robust cluster on a VPS or a cloud platform. So for larger organizations with more complex infrastructure, you'll want to go with either self-hosted or managed Kubernetes services. In fact, self-hosting will also give you more control and flexibility too. So let's take a closer look at a self-hosted Kubernetes setup. First, we'll need to get a virtual private server. With Hostinger, you'll get a secure and powerful VPS hosting environment, whatever your needs may be. You can get your own plan by clicking the link in this landing page in the description below. For the tutorial, I'll go with the KVM2 plan. It's a good starting point for deploying Kubernetes as you'll need at least two CPU cores for it. If you're expecting more load though, you'll probably need one of the plans you see on the right. To get the best deal, choose the two year period. Then proceed with creating an account with your email or Google account and selecting your preferred payment method. Fill in the required payment details and apply the coupon code VPS10 to receive a 10% discount on your purchase. Now just complete the payment and you'll be taken to the VPS onboarding page. Start with choosing the server location with the lowest latency for optimal performance. If you plan to use KubeSphere to manage Kubernetes clusters, you can use this template as a shortcut. You'll get Kubernetes automatically installed so we can go straight into the KubeSphere setup after completing the onboarding steps. This time, I'm going to show you how to install Kubernetes with this Ubuntu version, but you can still follow the tutorial just fine for another use case too. Next, you can install Monarchs in your VPS by ticking the checkbox, but if you don't want to, just skip it by clicking continue. Now, review the server information, make sure everything is right, and click finish setup. Then you can log into your VPS with an SSH client, terminal, or our browser terminal, which you can access from HPanel's VPS dashboard. If you're going with SSH, you'll find the login credentials over here. We'll run our commands as root, so once we're connected, let's create a new super user for better account security. Simply enter this line. Then enter your new user's password and other details and grant the account admin privileges by adding it to the pseudo group. Next, Switch to the new user by entering this command. Once your command line name changes, run cd to return to the home directory. Then ensure your VPS is up to date by running this command. Kubernetes relies on a container runtime like Docker, so we're going to install it first by entering this command. Then run this command to activate it as system service. Now continue with entering these lines to disable swaps on all of the nodes. Then we're going to use TEE to load the required kernel models for Kubernetes. So enter these commands. Continue with adding the necessary kernel parameters for Kubernetes networking. And finally, apply all of the changes by reloading the system settings with this command. 
All right, we've set up the environment, so let's move on to installing Container. Containered is a container runtime that manages the life cycle of containers and their dependencies, simple as could be. So to install the necessary installation packages on your server, run this command. Okay, next, add the Docker repository to your system with a curl command. Okay, so continue with updating your system's package list like this and install Containered with this command. Now we want to set Containered to use systemd as the C group manager by entering these commands. Once that's done, just run these commands to restart and enable the Containered service. Okay, so at this point, we can begin installing Kubernetes components. So first, we need to retrieve the public signing key for Kubernetes package repositories. You can do that by running this command. After that, run this one to add the appropriate Kubernetes app repository. Next, update your package lists and install the Kubernetes components by running these commands over here. Okay, so now let's prevent automatic updates of these components by pinning their versions. Enter this line over here. You can also enable the kubelet service to start immediately with this command, but this step is optional. And that's it! Kubernetes is now successfully installed on all of your nodes. Up next, we're going to deploy our applications. With all necessary components installed and configured, it's time to deploy your first application on your nodes. Remember, when proceeding with the steps, be mindful of which node each step is implemented on. Let's begin by creating a Kubernetes cluster, which includes setting up your master node as the control plane. This lets it manage worker nodes and arrange container deployments across the system. Let's start by running this kubeadmin command. You'll see this output once it's installed. Take note of the IP address and token from the kubeadmin join line as you'll need these when adding your worker nodes to this cluster. Once the cluster starts successfully, enter this command to create a directory for cluster configuration and set the proper permissions. Then, just run the kubectl command to verify the cluster and node's status. And finally, you should see this output once finished. Okay, now switch to the server you wish to add as a worker node. Then, use the kubeadmin join command with the IP address and token noted earlier. Repeat this process for each server you want to add as a worker node to the cluster. Once all of the nodes are added, return to your master node to check all of the node statuses with this command. And then, you'll see them in the output. Next, we're going to install Kubernetes pod network, which lets nodes communicate with each other in a cluster. There are several pod network plugins available, with Flannel and Calico being the most popular. I'll go with Flannel this time, so run this command to get it. But if you prefer Calico, you can find the command to copy and paste in the article I linked below the video. Once the pod network is installed, run this command to remove any unnecessary taints that might prevent scheduling on control panel nodes. Now it's time to deploy your application, which is packaged as a Docker image using Kubernetes. First, make sure your cluster and system pods are operational by entering this command. You should see the status from this output. If everything is fine, deploy your application by pulling your Docker image into the cluster. Run this command and don't forget to replace this part with your deployment name and this one with the actual Docker image. Once that's done, run this command just to confirm that your application is deployed successfully. If you see this output, congratulations, the application deployment was successful. And just like that, you're ready to simplify application management with Kubernetes. If you have any further questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more VPS related tutorials like this in the future. As always, thank you for watching and good luck on your online journey.